My name is Rebecca Fitzhugh, and in this video, I will show you how to protect and restore Google Cloud instances with Rubrik Polaris. First, I'll begin by showing you how backup frequency and retention is defined through our SLA domain, as well as how to assign and manage data protection. Next, I will show you the different options for restoring data, which include restore and export. Rubrik Polaris provides simple, unified data operations management across multiple clouds and data centers. Let's take a look. After logging into Rubrik Polaris, you'll find yourself on the homepage dashboard, which provides an overview of compliance across all data sources managed by Rubrik. Adding a GCP project to Rubrik Polaris is painless, making day zero a simple and easy experience. To begin, navigate to Manage Settings, and then select Remote Settings. In the top right, go ahead and click Add Cloud Account. A dialog appears, choose GCP, and then Next. And go ahead and choose which use case. In this case, we're just going to select VM Protection. And then Authorize Access. Polaris uses OAuth-based tokens from the Cloud Administrator account for the setup workflow. The setup flow only grants Rubrik the least amount of permissions that it requires for backup and recovery. Choose for which projects Rubrik Polaris will manage protection and whether or not it's a shared VPC project. Go ahead and review and then submit. Once the account has been successfully added, the next step is to go ahead and assign a protection policy called an SLA domain. So let's go ahead and create an SLA domain. SLA domains greatly simplify your data lifecycle management. Under protection policies, I can specify the snapshot frequency and retention and not worry about job scheduling for backups and expiry. So for example, I might choose to take hourly snapshots for operational recovery purposes and really only retain them for a single day. And then I can also choose to take a daily and retain it for say 90 days. Under remote policies, I can specify a replication target such as another region and how long the replicated copy should be retained. If data is regulated and retained for a stipulated period of time, I can also choose an archive location, and Rubrik will automatically expire snapshots in the archive based on your SLA domain. So let's go ahead and name our SLA domain that we have created, and submit. Because an SLA domain is a declarative policy, once I apply to a data type, then all of the lifecycle orchestration is scheduled and automatically managed to meet my desired outcomes. And I can assign this policy as broadly or as granularly as required by my use case, from the project level all the way down to the individual workload. So by selecting inventory, I can view all of my different data sources, such as GCP. By clicking on GCP, I'm directed to the GCE Instances tab by default. Here I can view the Compute Engine VM instances across my configured projects and regions. Notice the information presented. I see things like the instance name, the instance ID, project ID, region, size, VPCs and subnet information, as well as the SLA and the assignment type, whether direct or derived. And on the left-hand side, I can filter using these categories to limit my field of view. So for example, I might only want to see workloads that are located in US Central 1 and only those within the TM project. To assign an SLA domain for protection, simply go ahead and select one or more instances and then click Manage Protection. From there, you'll be presented a list of all of the available SLA domains for you to go ahead and select which one you want to choose and then assign it. Alternatively, an SLA domain may be assigned to an entire project. This ensures a catch-all style of protection in which all new instances will inherit 
the level of protection from the SLA policy. To assign an SLA domain to a project, simply go to the Projects tab and then select a project and click Manage Protection in a similar manner. Any SLA domain directly assigned to an instance will take precedence. So this ensures that you can assign policies broadly to guarantee protection of all data while still providing different levels of service for critical data. Now let's look at managing a specific workload. I can either go back to my GCE Instances tab or I can go ahead and just select a project name to view its workloads. So let's go ahead and select my Ubuntu instance that's been protected by an SLA domain. Notice on the left hand side I can view its protection details such as how many protected disks and information about the SLA domain and associated snapshots up top. Customers may choose to exclude one or more disks from being protected by Polaris. If this is done all future snapshots will not include the disk in its protection. So to do so, simply select the ellipsis up at the top right and click Exclude Disks. From there, I can choose which disk I want to exclude and then go ahead and select Update. Note that the OS disk is always included and by default, all disks on an instance are included in protection. If a customer were to attach a new disk to the instance, then it will be protected along with the instance itself. Now that I've configured disk exclusion, we can see that my protection status has changed and all future backups will include only my OS disk and not the disk that I just chose to exclude. On the right hand side, the snapshots calendar provides a visual representation of my different recovery points. I can go ahead and select a date on the calendar to see exactly what points in time may be selected. And if I need to take action, I can simply go ahead and choose the ellipsis near the point in time that I want to recover from and then choose a recovery method, whether I want to restore or export. If I choose the restore option, then the instance will be rolled back to the time of the snapshot. Export enables the ability to create a new instance from this point in time. So let's see that in action. A dialog appears prompting for a series of inputs such as the name, region, availability zone, VPC information, and tags. So I can go through and in this case, I went ahead and selected just the defaults, but I can make whatever selections I want for the exported copy and then go ahead and choose to export. Now I can go ahead and navigate to the events tab to monitor this exports progress. We can see that the recovery completed and it only took about 23 seconds. So now let's go to GCP to verify that we can see the newly exported instance. So let's go through and do a refresh of our compute engine. And we now see the recovered instance. In this video, you saw how backup frequency and retention is defined through the creation of an SLA domain as well as how you can assign SLA domains to guarantee different levels of protection across your GCP projects and instances. Secondly, we saw different options for operational recovery, the ability to restore in place or export a copy. Additionally, I showed you how easy it was to get started by adding a GCP project. Not only does Rubrik Polaris securely orchestrate data operations across all of your cloud accounts, it's also consumed as a service. So this means that you don't have to deploy, manage, scale, or upgrade your data management platform. And most importantly, your protected data never leaves your account. Managing your data lifecycle across cloud platforms and on-premises has never been so easy. Thank you for watching. For additional information, please visit rubric.com.